Hey everyone, Mark here. Welcome to my channel. So I'm going to try to get back to doing some of these. I said I was going to start doing them uh, towards the latter part of 2023. And I want to continue doing some of them. Um, a lot of these are really, really interesting. And what is that? This video is to review the 2018 Elvis Omaha, Nebraska 74. So we're going to talk about the packaging. We'll talk about the audio quality. Just an overall uh, rating of what I think of this particular release. And this uh, request comes from my good friend Marcus. Uh, he lives actually in Nebraska. He had asked me to do this video. So Marcus, this video is for you. So again, this is a 2018 release. Um, I really like this cover. I like it a lot. He's wearing, Elvis is wearing one of my favorite jumpsuits, the peacock suit. Um, I really love the Elvis font and the different uh, colors. Um, this is a five inch, what they call a digi pack. There's the track listings on the back. I'll hold that up if you want to, if you can read it, if you want to pause it. Uh, so these were taken from the, sorry, I got to put on my glasses. These were taken uh, from the uh, June 30th, 1974 afternoon show at 2.30 p.m. and the June 30th evening show at 8.30 p.m. Uh, all tracks recorded live from the mixing board at Omaha Auditorium Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, so this is a really, really cool release. Um, the first show is complete with the exception of the uh, introduction of Elvis coming out. It goes right into CC Rider. And uh, it's got uh, 20 songs ending with the closing vamp. Um, audio quality is pretty good. It's pretty solid. Again, it's a soundboard recording. Um, it does sound, a lot of these soundboard recordings, they sound a little bit, uh, a little bit muffled. That's probably the best way I can describe it. The bass is heavy as far as the bass on this. J.D. Sumner and the back ground singers, you know, the stamps and um, uh, everyone in the background doing their, their part. Um, it seems to be a little bit heavy, especially on J.D. Sumner's microphone. You can really, really hear it. It's really prominent. Um, it's not, it doesn't detract from the concert at all, um, but Elvis is in a good mood. And it's very reminiscent of um, uh, Elvis Presley on stage or Elvis on stage in Memphis. Uh, the 1974 album, um, Elvis is recorded on stage in Memphis. I said that wrong. Um, but uh, Elvis is in good form, good spirits, great vocally. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, I actually prefer the evening show. Uh, I think the tape ran out. Inside it does say. Um, the last songs on the evening show were not recorded. The tape ran out, it says in parentheses. And consequently, there are some flaws during the Steamroller Blues. So no real flaws that I could hear. It just, it fades out. It doesn't end abruptly. It just, it kind of fades out. So I don't know if the actual finished tape, the original, it just ended because the tape ran out. That's what I'm sus suspecting. And then when this was mixed and made for Follow That Dream, uh, I, think, I think they just faded it out. So it wasn't such an abrupt ending. But uh, a couple of cool things I noticed about this on the closing vamp on the on the um, afternoon show, you know, you have that ba -ba -da -ba, you know, and he's you know shaking hands and you know throwing out his last scarf and you know doing his you know that he does and everything and then he he leaves. Um, the horn stop and you just hear the you know just the drums and the guitar. But then I heard something I never heard before saxophone prominent saxophone at the end and it's really cool and um at the end and i don't know if it's al devorn i think is his name who says elvis has left the building and then they kind of hawk the you know elvis posters and pins and tour booklets are available you know at the uh, concourse and all that he doesn't say any of that and it doesn't actually sound like al devorn i can't tell if it is anybody who has this and can tell me um if it definitely is him uh, at the end, let me know. Comment, let me know. But all he simply says is, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building or something along those lines. That's all he says. Like I said, I've listened to these each once and, uh, and then it just cuts off. Um, but like I said, overall, uh, Elvis is, is in a good mood. Uh, he, he really, in this show a lot, he really, really uh, interacts a lot with the crowd, joking around. 
uh, you know, you hear, you hear the, the ladies yell, hey, oh, let's turn around. Like I said, it's very much, very much, all of these 1974 FTD releases, they all remind me of Elvis is recorded on stage in Memphis. You know, it, it's within, m most of them are within, you know, months of each other and a very similar track listing. But again, Elvis is a great voice, great spirits, having a good time. Doesn't sound tired like he did in some of his later concerts towards the end of his life. So I really, really like that. But I think the highlight of this set is the second show, Disc 2. Um, now, before we go that go through that, let's look at the packaging. So what's interesting is uh, these photographs. I'm sorry I'm looking so close. I'm having cataract surgery, so I'm not allowed to wear my contacts for quite a while. So um, I, I can't stand my glasses. I hate wearing them. I'm constantly complaining to my wife and kids about it. So for purposes of this video, uh, and because of the, the glare it, it puts on when I'm making the video from my stand light, I really want to avoid looking at you making it. So I'll use it for the purposes of reading only. Um, so it says, all photos taken four days before the Omaha shows at the Fair and Expo Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky, June 26, 1974. So all these are from the same show. So there is the first, you can see Elvis, uh, I guess, giving a scarf to a fan, uh, a couple of ticket stubs. There's Elvis at the, at the stand. So these were not from this actual show. So I don't know if there's hardly any like decent photos taken from these two shows. It's just odd that Follow That Dream did not use photos from that show. And they've done that before. Uh, there's a small picture of Elvis uh, talking to um, one of the ladies on the stage singing with him. And there's Elvis probably looks like he's getting a drink. Uh, and the discs are really cool. I like the discs themselves. The black with the, the pink Elvis logo. And if you remove the disc, you can see a couple really nice shots of Elvis. Uh, I'll try to get that there without the, the glare. The glare really stinks on these, man. I hate that. But really, really cool shots. Um, like I said, I, I like the discs. Move that disc, and then there's a couple other ones of him in that peacock jumpsuit. So I, I really, I was really happy with the layout and the design overall. Uh, looks like FTD put quite a bit of effort into it. Now, uh, as far as the second show, it was definitely longer. Thus, I think that's why the tape ran out. But there were some, a couple of changes. In the afternoon show, he did not do the song, but he included it in the evening show. And again, it's superb. How Great Thou Art. Awesome. Of course, Elvis won a Grammy for that 1974 performance on recorded live on stage in Memphis. Uh, let's see. Uh, the introductions are longer on the uh, evening show than they are in the afternoon show. And the afternoon show is only a minute 35 introductions it was 316 but it's because he was talking more he also included bridge over troubled water again it's so superb and Elvis overall seemed like he was in a better mood for the second show not by a whole lot but um I, and I've heard this when, I, when I've read some reviews on some of his concerts if he did an afternoon show and an evening show which he did several times uh up until I think uh, summer of 76 or October of 76 right around there uh, that's when he stopped doing the afternoon shows. But uh, Elvis, of course, was pretty much nocturnal. He would, you know, be up all night, sleep during the day, and then he'd get up in time for these performances. So it's almost like he just wasn't quite there. He wasn't quite awake yet. He didn't have that, that oomph in him yet. He kind of had to get geared up. And as the show went on, you hear him get more and more, you know, uh, into the music, into the joking with the fans and all that. But the evening show, and at least I've read this on several different uh, reviews and, and articles that I've read, he was just more, just more upbeat, uh, more in tune with, with what he was doing and the songs that he was performing. And this show, th th this set, I should say, is no different. The evening show, he is definitely, he kicks it in the high gear. And again, he's in great vocal form. Um, and uh, another cool thing on this, is, and he doesn't even introduce anything, but there's a 26 second version of Happy Birthday. And he, it, it, but the song before that was Let Me Be There. So he had Bridge Over Troubled Water, Let Me Be There. And uh, he's talking to the crowd saying, you know, he's gonna, you know, I'll be over there in a second. 
honey and all that. I guess he's giving out a scarf. And then they just go right into happy birthday. But then he says, happy birthday, dear Sylvia. So it's, it's his backup singer's birthday. And he, after the song, he doesn't say, happy birthday, dear. Nothing. He just sings it. And then they go right into Funny How Time Slips Away. Again, that song is one of my favorites. I love it. And then you have Big Boss Man, which is an okay version. It has a lot of piano in it. Not a huge fan of, of the live version, at least the later version. But then here's the really weird, weird, almost anomaly with this, with this uh, concert. He starts to go into My Way. And as he goes into it, it just has the piano, you know, dun, 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 dun. They expect him to say, you know, and now, and go into it. But the piano just goes over, just dun, 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 dun. And this goes on for 30, exactly 30 seconds. And he never starts to sing. It's not like he started and it was a false start and he stopped. It just has that dun, 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 for 30 seconds. And he goes, hold it. And he goes, let's do, uh, Let's see. Let's do Steamroller Blues. <laughs> and then no explanation. He doesn't say, you know, I'm not in the mood for this. He just says, you know, hold it. Let's do And then here he goes, Steamroller Blues. And they go in Steamroller Blues. And then at uh, two minutes and 16 seconds, it fades out because I'm assuming the tape had abruptly cut out. But when uh, this was mixed, um, I think this is probably Ro Roger. Uh, let's see. Mastered by, okay, art direction and comp, sorry. I know, I, I feel like an old guy, like, looking at this. Mastered by Jan Eliason. Art directed and compilation produced, and they do all these FTDs. Ernst Michael Jorgensen and Roger Samen, Simon, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But uh, they do all the FTDs, uh, a lot of the uh, albums as well. And um, they just do a phenomenal job, I think. Um, now, the question is, is this release worthy of adding to your collection? Um, it is, I would say, an, uh, a resounding yes, it is. Uh, Elvis is excellent in 1974. I've always thought that. He's, he's even better in 1972. Um, there's not as many shows uh, out there that I'm aware of. FTD has released some, not many. Um, you have What Now My Love, which is excellent. One of my favorite FTD uh, CDs out there. It's a double show, and uh, but this one, this one is really, really solid. Um, it does kind of lack that audio punch. Uh, if it was like an actual, you know, RCA recording, uh, it does have a little bit of that muffled kind of uh, uh, sound to it. But again, Elvis is in fantastic form. He's loose. He's having fun. He's you know talking to the crowd and. Uh, just being a goofball in some cases. And I love that. I love hearing that about Elvis. I mean, yeah, it, it is some redundant. You know, you always have, you know, from nineteen mid-1973 almost to the very end, it was always the same thing. You know, he'd come out on stage to 2001 Space Odyssey. He'd go into CC Rider. He'd do I Got a Woman, Amen. J.D. Sumner doing his, his thing. Go right into Love Me, trying to get to you. So that was the same formula for several years. So again, you're like, you know, you know, and, and of course, after C.C. Ryder, he does the, you know, whoa, 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 you know. And uh, that kind of got redundant. But overall, man, a, a great performance of trying to get to you. Uh, just good, good stuff. You know, Why Me, Lord, Suspicious Minds, which he does a great job. I Can't Stop Loving You, which is a fan favorite and one of my favorites. Uh, another weird thing, he does American Trilogy on the afternoon show. But oddly enough... It is not on the evening show. It is not, which I always thought was a staple of every concert he did from like 1971 on. It's not on this. Now, whether or not it was after Steamroller Blues or one of the later songs, I'm thinking, but I kind of doubt it because on the afternoon show, it was the same setup. He had Funny How Time Slips Away, Big Boss Man, Steamroller Blues, and then he ended it with Can't Help Falling in Love. Evening show, Funny How Time Slips Away, Big Boss Man, he tr attempted my way, didn't like it apparently, and then went into Steamroller Blues. So for whatever reason, American Trilogy is not on the evening show. So that's, like I said, that's kind of like one of those weird anomalies. So yeah, definitely if you can find it, um, you could probably Google it, hunt for it, probably pick it up maybe on eBay or on Discogs for a somewhat decent price since it is only from, well now it's almost six years old, but overall a really, really solid release from FTD. So just wanted to do this quick review. I want to do more of these. 
uh, do thank you for uh, taking the time to watch, for those who subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.